ahead and get started. In this lesson we're going to learn how to navigate within the viewport. So this main panel that we're looking at is our viewport. It's a single panel view. If I tap the spacebar I can go to a four panel layout. This shows the four main cameras that launch with Maya. These are the default cameras and they consist of the perspective camera, a side camera, a front, and a top. And I can go into each one of these panels just by hovering over them and tapping the spacebar. Okay, I'm going to go back to my perspective view, hover over this, tap the spacebar, and we're back out here in our perspective view. And to navigate within the scene here, I'm going to hold down the Alt key on a PC. If I'm on a Mac, I'm going to hold down the Option key. And with my mouse, I'm going to use the three different mouse buttons to navigate. Now if you're on a Mac, you're going to have to go into your settings and click on Mouse and go in there and set up the different mouse buttons to be a primary, I think it's the first one, and then set up the right mouse button to be the second, and then the trackball will be the third. Okay, so I'm on a PC, so I'm going to just hold down my Alt key, and I'm going to click and drag with the left mouse button, and this is allowing me to tumble around the scene. Okay. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and this is going to allow me to dolly in and out. So we are looking through a camera. So this is dollying in and out as opposed to zooming up on a scene. If you're in a 2D environment like Photoshop, you're actually zooming in and out. In a 3D space, we're actually moving the camera in and out of the scene. Okay. And then with the, the middle mouse or the trackball, whichever you may have, I'm going to click and hold that and this is going to allow me to pan up and down and side to side. Okay, so this is really uh, an important part of getting used to working within Maya is knowing how to navigate within the viewport. So holding down that Alt or if you're on a Mac, the Option key and working with the three mouse buttons to navigate in 3D space. Okay, you may find that that trackball, if you scroll it, it will zoom in and out for you. So what that trackball does is it does allow you to move in and out of the scene here, but it does it in increments. And it also doesn't give you a lot of fine control. So get into the habit of holding down the Alt key and using the right mouse button to dolly in and out of your scene. All right, let's jump out here to the website for Autodesk 2017 and I'm just going to click down here on 3D coordinates uh, tumble, track, dolly, roll, and zoom. So these are the three things that we just covered here. These are the main navigations. So again it's going to show you what to do up here holding down the Alt key and dragging with the left mouse button that allows you to tumble around and to track the camera you're going to hold down the Alt key and middle mouse drag and then to dolly in and out, that's holding down the Alt key and right mouse drag. So let's go back out to Maya. Okay, so let's talk about this grid that we're looking at in the middle of our viewport. This grid is made up of units that are all the same size. And in the center of this grid, we have an intersection here of two lines that are thicker. And there's an invisible one that's actually the up and down axis, but what this is is the X, Y, and Z coordinates coming together in the center of Maya's world, known as world space in Maya, and this is the origin of Maya, so whenever we create things in Maya, it's going to happen on this origin right here, and uh, this is actually very important when you are modeling, especially for a game engine. Okay, so this is called Maya's origin. And the grid itself is made up of these different units here. And these units correspond to the size or the, the translation of objects inside of Maya's world. Okay, let's go ahead and just drop a cube out here. I'm going to click on a shortcut for a polygon cube. This is the polygon shelf. I'm going to click on that and you can see that it dropped right into that 000 space that origin. You also may notice that over here we had some information pop up under the channel box and layer editor. 
this is telling us where this cube lives in space. So right now it's on the origin. If I were to move this around, we would see it translate, rotate, or scale according to the number of units. So let's go ahead and move this cube around by selecting over here under our tools. We've got move, scale, and rotate. You can see the different manipulators that show up for that. I'm going to choose the one with the arrows on it. This is uh, the move tool. And you can see that it aligns with this axis down here. So we've got Y, that is the up and down coordinate or axis, the Z, which is running along this axis here, and then the X, okay? And they are color coordinated. So if I click on the different ones, when they're highlighted, they turn yellow. So we've got blue, which is our Z axis, red is our X, and if I click on the red here, you'll see that the green axis is our Y coordinate. Okay, so let's go ahead and just move this over. As I begin sliding it on the Z axis, you can see that it has a positive or negative number showing up here in this Translate Z. So as I push it back or away from camera, I'm going to get a negative number. And as I pull it forward, crossing that X axis right here, I get a positive number. Okay, so if I type in 4, I've moved 4 units up. Okay, and we can see that this manipulator is falling on that, that intersection here for 4 units up in the Z axis. Okay, for Z translate. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and set it back to zero. That's going to take it back to the origin. Okay, we don't see the grid here uh, happening on the on the y-axis. If I tap the space bar and I go to my front view, I can also see that there's a grid here for the y-axis. So if I put a two in here, you can see that it's gone up two units. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set that back to zero. Okay, let's come in here and let's go ahead and choose our rotate manipulator and go ahead and look at what rotate does. So we can rotate on the three different axes. Okay, so X, Y, and Z, rotate. You're seeing those, you're seeing those happen right here and the different rotations that are happening. Okay, I'm going to hit Z. Z is going to undo. Okay, so you can see it going through all of those different uh, iterations that I went through, moving it around. Okay, and then we're going to go to scale, and we can scale in Y, X, and Z. I could also come here into the center, where these are all intersecting, and if I grab this, it's going to scale uniformly in X, Y, and Z. Okay, so if I take everything back to 1, make it uniform here, and I can click and drag this to the right to scale it up or to scale it down. Okay, I can also click and drag over here, so I'll just click off for a second, click and drag in these channels, type in a number, and hit enter, and we'll get that coordinate over here. So I've just doubled the, the scale on that up to two. Okay, I can also click and drag on these names here of the different channels and come over here with my middle mouse button and if you see I click and hold I get these arrows and I can interactively also scale if I move left to right with the middle mouse button. Okay, this gets handy when it's hard to actually grab the manipulator. You'll notice that the, manip the manipulator is not up right now. Okay, if I were to just click on one of these different channel boxes, it'll come up. If I click and drag on all of them, it goes away. Okay, but I can work with uh, scaling uniformly by doing this as well. Okay, I'm going to click and drag in the channels here, type one in, take it back to its origin. 
So we have some hotkeys that we can use instead of coming over here and clicking each time to access this, we can speed up our workflow a little bit by using some hotkeys. So W is the shortcut or the hotkey for move, E is rotate, and R is for scale. Okay. I can also hover over here. I can get a dialog box if I hover. Okay, these are called tool clips and they'll give you some information about what this tool does and if there's a hotkey it's going to show up right over here. Okay, so we've got the W here, we've got E here for the rotate and for the scale we've got R. Okay, and up here another useful one is the select tool which is just the arrow all this does is allow us to select or deselect things. So you can see I'm just dragging little marquees. I can drag a marquee. I can also just click on and off. Okay? And that's what the selection tool does. We'll talk about ways of selecting and deselecting in another lesson, but just know you can select and deselect with this select tool. These other tools right here, we'll get into those a little bit later. They're just uh, different ways of selecting things. Okay, but the main tools you want to get comfortable with and using the hotkeys are move, move, rotate, and scale. So let's go ahead and try that. So we've got W, E, and R. Okay, you may also notice that if we look at this scale, we've got some little flat areas right here in between the different coordinates. So between the z-axis and the x-axis, I have a square. If I grab that, what it's going to do is scale just along those two axes. Okay, so you can see right here that I've scaled it up a little bit over two. Okay, likewise I can scale it in this direction between these two. So this is the the y and the z and this is the y and the x. Okay, so you'll notice it right here. I can move it along this axis here, or here, or here, okay? The, uh, the rotate doesn't have that. All right, so that's how you navigate within the scene and using the move, scale, and rotate, and also using our Alt key option if you're on a Mac, and using the three mouse button to tumble around your scene. So this is the camera tumbling around our object. We can also dolly in and out and then we can uh, pan up and down and side to side. Okay, so get comfortable with that and we'll come back in the next lesson and we'll expand on this and start looking at the user interface.